And here is your 10 o'clock appointment, Mr. Greer. Good morning. Nice to see you again. Mr. Greer, may I present Mr. Arthur Jones, who is interested in a possible industrial location in Carroll County for a small electronics firm. How do you do, Mr. Jones? We think we have much to offer in our county. May I uh, present our county commissioners who are going to sit in on our discussion? Mr. Rice, Mr. Graham, and Mr. Meyer. Mr. Jones, I'm assuming Mr. George drove you here from Baltimore, here on the map. Carroll County is but uh, 40 minutes from the center of Baltimore City. You will also note that we are located directly north of Washington, D.C., about an hour's drive. And actually, Carroll County it has 20 million people living within 200 miles of its borders. Carroll County, as you can see on this map, is made up of eight major communities. Westminster, Manchester, Hampstead, Tawny Town, Union Bridge, New Windsor, Mount Airy, and Sykesville. Now, gentlemen, we would like to show you a film entitled The Carroll County Story, which is a helicopter tour of our industry and points of interest. Can we have the lights out? in downtown Westminster, the county seat. We pass over the tower of the courthouse and are soon flying over open farmland. Agriculture is still the largest source of income here, but new types of industry are finding Carroll County an ideal location for their plants and are rapidly bringing change to the economy. This modern shopping center is one example. Another is the new Random House Book Distribution Center just outside of Westminster. At the dedication of the new facility, Chairman of the Board, Bennett Sir, cut the ribbon and invited everyone to tour the new building. Inside the five-acre plant, 12 million books with 8,000 different titles are stacked 25 feet high. A forklift truck is used to retrieve them. The 300 employees select and ship 100,000 books a day. The plant has its own post office to speed shipments to many parts of the world. From the Random House plant, we fly north to the town of Manchester, where two important Indian trails once crossed. In 1765, Captain Richard Richards laid out the town and named it after the city in England where he was born. At nearby Hampstead, one of the main landmarks is the Black and Decker plant. Built in 1951, it has since been enlarged five times. Some officials from Black & Decker are coming to greet us. President Alonzo Decker wishes to add his word of welcome. Welcome to Black & Decker. We're very happy to have you visit with us here this morning at our Hampstead plant. As you may know, this is the largest of our 13 manufacturing facilities. These facilities are engaged in producing products that we supply to all of the free world. And as you see here, there is a variety of products on these display boards. 
many of which are made in our Carroll County plant. Some of these you will see on the production lines as you go through the plant this morning. We hope that you spend as much time with us today as you wish. Black and Decker's Hampstead plant is under 18 acres of roof and is a fully integrated manufacturing facility employing 3,200 persons in a three-shift operation. A stockpile of steel is readied for a machine which cuts it into many sizes and shapes needed to make the 250 different power tools produced here. The punch press is one of many heavy tools used to prepare parts for the assembly line. On this assembly line, the utility saw is being manufactured. This plant produces 60,000 power tools each week. As we leave Black & Decker, we fly over beautiful farmland represents one-third of the county's economy. We land at one of our 2,000 farms. Like most in the county, it is fully mechanized. Farmers are kept informed of the latest advance in agriculture by frequent visits of the county agricultural agent. When the fields have been cleared in the fall, the countryside offers great sport for the pheasant hunter. The more than 500 farm ponds attract ducks in the fall and winter months. On a crisp autumn day, the hunter's horn and the baying of a pack of hounds are welcome sounds to the ears of many horsemen in the county. But the dairy cow is the most familiar face on a Carroll County farm. A new calf has just been born and is getting tender, loving care. This young lady, when fully grown, will be milked in a parlor where a sealed vacuum milking system ensures the purity of the milk. chickens come an endless conveyor line of eggs which are processed and packaged entirely by machine. Farm youth have an opportunity to learn the skills of modern farming in the 4-H program. Dairy and beef cattle showing is an important part of the 4-H program. We proceed south to one of Carroll County's oldest industries. Mongolium Nairn Company at Finksburg was started over 50 years ago. One of eight Congolium plants in the eastern part of the United States, it produces the felt base for floor covering products. The basic raw materials are wood pulp, paper stock, and rag. Grinding and chemical treatment reduce them into a thick liquid, which is then fed into this machine. Large rollers provide a succession of pressure and heat to remove moisture. The final product is wound on large rolls in preparation for shipment.
As we leave Congolium, we fly over its efficient water filtration system, considered to be one of the best pollution control installations in the United States. Flying along US Route 140, we approach another of the county's newer industries. The Rowan Controller Company develops and manufactures heavy motor control systems used primarily in the petrochemical industries. The drafting and engineering department custom designs control systems to meet special needs. The initial step in the manufacture of a control system is the fabrication of the metal case. Wiring and final assembly follow. The result, a plug-in module for controlling the manufacture of synthetic fibers. is one of the items leaving Rowan's Westminster plant for an overseas destination. Returning to Westminster, we fly over Western Maryland College and its 160-acre campus. Established as the first co-educational college south of the Mason-Dixon line, it has provided education in the liberal arts for more than 100 years. The college has a faculty of over 70 full-time professors and a student body of more than 1,000. Well-equipped laboratories, such as this physiology lab and the computer science center are indicative of the college's desire to keep up with modern educational needs. But life on campus is not all study and hard work. The homecoming queen and her court make their entrance. Johnny Unitas and the Baltimore Colts do their preseason training on the playing fields at Western Maryland College. Each summer afternoon, several hundred spectators gather to watch the Colts in practice. In downtown Westminster, the courthouse and the historical house reflect the town's rich tradition. Westminster is also a busy industrial center. Here at the Westminster Knit Company, a division of Jonathan Logan, all wool suits are made. The process starts in the cutting room with rolls of material which are spread, marked, and then cut to pattern. The finished suit gradually emerges as the pieces are put together on a sewing assembly line. The product is carefully examined before shipment. At Carroll Manufacturing, a subsidiary of Genesco, men's suits go through a similar process of cutting and sewing. Carefully tailored, custom-made men's suits are made for some of the finest tailoring outlets in the country. At Kessler Shoe, high-quality children's shoes are made. Patterns are cut by machine, and the upper part of the shoe is cut and sewed prior to using the special molding machines to make the soles. Over 20,000 pairs of shoes are made daily by the Westminster Shoe and Kessler Shoe Companies. 
We leave Westminster, and in just five minutes helicopter time, we're over Tawny Town, the oldest of the eight towns in the county. Below is the town's chief industry, the Cambridge Rubber Company, manufacturer of rubber footwear and the third largest employer of the county's 67 industries. Landing in Tawny Town's Memorial Park and Playground, we are met by Mayor Powell and Frank Dunham, the chairman of the county's Economic Development Commission. To the west is Terra Rubra, the home of Francis Scott Key, who wrote the Star Spangled Banner during the bombardment of Fort McHenry in 1814. Five miles east of Terra Rubra, we fly over the county's only indoor training track for thoroughbred race horses. Bowling Brook Farm has produced five Preakness winners and has been an important horse breeding farm for well over a century. The woodworking industry is an important phase of the county's economic growth. Built in 1962, the M.R. Fouts and Sons Union Bridge plant is an example of family-owned industry. Every year, over seven million feet of kiln-dried oak boards are used in the manufacture of prefabricated stairways. The county's rich deposits of native limestone provide the Lehigh Portland Cement Company with their basic raw materials. quarry at Union Bridge, the limestone is blasted and loaded into trucks, then hauled to a giant crusher. These two rotating tubes are kilns. Inside, limestone is burned at 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. The burned limestone is then ground to produce cement. At the Union Bridge plant, a major part of the cement is shipped in bulk, either by rail or in trucks like this one. volunteer fire department. This is one of 14 companies, with over a thousand volunteer firemen who cooperate to protect the citizens of Carroll County. Another county-wide service is provided by the Carroll County General Hospital. Recently enlarged to 125 beds, it is of modern design and offers a wide range of modern treatment facilities. Carroll Countians are kept informed of local and worldwide events by WTTR, which operates on both AM and FM. The library system of the county is reinforced by a mobile unit which visits communities on a regular schedule. Its popularity is demonstrated by the number of young people who make regular use of the service. The county offers a variety of recreational opportunities. The YMCA and scouting organizations offer many programs to young people. The small, unspoiled community below is Uniontown. outside of the country store and post office is reminiscent of earlier days. Towns like Uniontown were often built around the mill. At Weller's Mill, 
the old water wheel still operates and turns the stones which grind the grain. Fifty years ago, almost a hundred of these old mills were located along the streams of the county. At the town of Union Mills is a historic homestead built by the Shriver family in 1797. Open to visitors each summer, the homestead is furnished just as Civil War generals found it when they stopped here prior to the Battle of Gettysburg. New Windsor in the late 1700s gained its reputation from a sulfur spring which brought people from far and wide to cure their ills. Today, New Windsor is the proud home of the Brethren Service Center, which processes and distributes medicines, clothing, and other materials to needy people throughout the world. Over six million pounds of clothing are shipped to 70 countries and 600 hospitals each year from the New Windsor operation. The Brethren Service Center, largest operation of its kind, involves genuine cooperation by several major religious organizations. Popular with the visitor to the center is the International Gift Shop, featuring gifts from many lands. Our helicopter takes us over the prime industrial land of Wakefield Valley along the Western Maryland Railroad. On our flight south toward Mount Airy, we come to South Carroll High School. This comprehensive high school serves the entire southern part of the county. At the extreme southwestern part of Carroll County lies Mount Airy. Its name was given because of its high altitude and because a railroad crew at one time decided that the climate there was a bit airish. From Mount Airy to Sykesville, we follow along the border of neighboring Howard County. Here, Colonial Pipeline's Petroleum Distribution Center is located. This site in southern Carroll County offers the company convenient access to the metropolitan areas of both Baltimore and Washington. One of the newest plants in Carroll County is located at Sykesville, just south of Springfield State Hospital. Built by Westinghouse in 1967, electric arc welding equipment is produced here. Coil winding and other sub-assembly processes precede the final assembly operation. Welding equipment produced here ranges in size from small utility units to the very large welders used in the fabrication of offshore oil drilling rigs. As we leave Sykesville, we fly over a housing development nestled along the banks of Liberty Reservoir. The wooded area below represents some of Carroll County's prime potential parkland. Back in the center of the county, we stop at the county's newest tourist attraction, the Carroll County Farm Museum. Here, the visitor can see what living in the 1800s was like on a Carroll County farm. Over a thousand items are on display here, and on special craft days, live action makes the Farm Museum a very interesting place to visit. Traditional autumn farm activities are carried on during the annual fall harvest day. Volunteers stir the apple butter. In the days before the supermarket, butchering was an essential skill for farmers. When needed, the whole family helped with the work on the farm. Even the children joined in the fall corn husking. But Carroll County's tradition is not all agricultural. In 1875, the Taylor Foundry of Westminster manufactured this early steam tractor. Even then, industry found Carroll County a convenient location. Today, newer industries are discovering the advantages of locating in Carroll County. When he dedicated the Random House plant, Bennett Cerf presented his own informal summary of the Carroll County story. Why did we come here? First, we came here because of the incredible cooperation we received from all the people we met in this area. 
and we're availing ourselves of all the things you have to offer. And I'm sure it's going to be a very happy marriage. Not only a wonderful location, central location, wonderful road facilities, the West Maryland Railroad running right past the door, Western Maryland College, which we hope will supply us with some of the more brilliant people we need to operate this thing successfully. All of this was right here at your doorstep. When we decided to move our warehouse from New York City, we examined sites all over the East. Carroll County had more to offer than any two others put together. Uh, uh, uh.